Hi, and welcome back to Big Red's Cooking. As always, I'm Big Red. Go ahead. So this week I'm going to do gnocchi for you. Now, gnocchi is one of those sort of little odd words. It's spelled G-N-O-C-C-H-I. -C -C it's actually an Italian word. And it's basically a little uh, potato pasta or potato dumpling. And there's not much more to it other than potato. A little bit of flour, a little bit of egg yolk, but primarily it's just potato. So, you know what, as always, why don't we go ahead and jump on over to our workbench. But really quickly, I want to say hi, Tasha, and thanks for the idea on this one. Tasha's a little bit of a carby Barbie, as she described herself to me. She loves the carbohydrates. And uh, so I'm sending this one out to her, and I hope she's feeling better these days. So, you know what, let's go on over, and we'll jump onto our workbench, and uh, we'll pick it up over there. All right, so to get started, I've got a couple of potatoes here. Nothing fancy done to them. I've just whoops, given them a scrub. We're going to go ahead. We're going to drop these right down into some cold water. And cold water is what we want for sure because it's going to give us a more even cooking. If we were to start this in hot water, we'd have those outsides cooking, you know, a lot faster before the inside has a chance to cook. We want to be able to cook these fully and we want to cook them with their skin on. It's actually going to give us a better product. Can't tell you why. I've never gone looking for it, but I do know this works out better. And one of the nice things is it's super easy to peel. So we'll go ahead and we'll get these turned on. There's nothing else we've got to do for this right now until these potatoes are fully cooked. We're just going to let that pot come up to a boil and we'll let those potatoes simmer away. Now, in the meantime, I like to get ahead on my prep work. Anyone who's watched my channel before knows. I've used an expression called mise en place, and that's a sort of a classic expression we use in kitchens all the time. Literally translates to everything in its place, but what we talk about, uh, when we're using that in the kitchen, we're talking about all the prep work that we do ahead of time to make our cooking much easier. So one of the things that I want to be able to do with these gnocchi when we're done, is I want to be able to do a nice creamy tomato sauce. I think it's a fantastic it's super simple so I got a whole fresh tomato here and what I want to be able to do is I'm going to do a technique called concasse which is basically we're just going to be left with chunks of the tomato flesh no skin and no seeds at all so in order to do that first thing we're going to do is we're actually just going to core out our tomato And then right at the very bottom, we're just going to mark a little X. And then I'm going to take this, and i got a pot of water that's simmering away there already. I'm just going to drop this down into the hot water for about 35 to 40 seconds, maybe up to a minute. What I want to see is I'm going to see that the peel is starting to crack and pull away a little bit from the tomato. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop it right down into ice cold water so that it immediately stops the cooking process. So really, we're just looking to cook that skin, that outer layer, so that it peels off super simple. And like I say, by dropping it down to the ice water, it'll stop the cooking process. We won't end up with a cooked tomato. We're just going to have something that's going to be super easy to peel. All right, so I think this is done here now. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop that right down to that ice cold water. All right, so we should be able to just peel off our, and um, part of the reason why we put the X at the bottom is that it gives us a place where we can just sort of get a hold and just pull our peel back. And you'll notice that the peel just sort of comes right off without any real issue whatsoever. All right, so there's all of our peels off. And again, if you've ever had cooked tomato peel, you'll know it's not really the nicest texture. <laughs> all right, so next thing we're doing, we're just gonna slice this right across the center. And what this is going to allow us to do is to get all those seeds out. So we can get the little squeeze, right? And all those seeds will just come right on out. And what this is going to do, because again, if you've ever had a tomato seed, especially a cooked one, it's not really a nice texture. You know, if you've ever had a can of tomatoes, you bought canned tomatoes at the store, you'll notice there's never any seeds and there's never any skins. 
and this is effectively what they're doing. Alright, so for now we're just going to take this, we're just going to give this a bit of a rough chop. And we'll just put those to the side, we won't need those for a little while. Alright, so I definitely want to have some garlic for this later, so I'm going to go ahead and get some garlic minced up. You know, and this is the type of thing where you got that time, you know, I'm waiting for these potatoes to cook. I may as well get all my other things ready. Because the less farting around I have to do afterwards, if I have all my stuff prepped up, it's just going to make the cooking process a whole lot easier. it will be a lot less scrambling around. Garlic smells so good. Yeah, okay, we just put that to the side there now. So at this point, we're gonna have a bit of a wait on our hands. We're gonna wait for these potatoes to cook. So we'll see you guys. Well, for you, it'll be about two or three seconds. For me, it's probably going to be about 30 to 35 minutes. So, at the, you know, all we got to do basically is just let this water come up to a simmer and let those potatoes cook. At that point, we'll pick up from there. All right, so our potatoes, I think, are, yeah, they're nice and done here now. Knife is sliding through them super easy. So we'll go ahead and get these pulled out. do in the meantime I'm going to get a pot of water simmering away so that this will be ready for our gnocchi once we get the gnocchi all made. Alright so we are going to be working with literal hot potatoes here now unlike the potatoes we used when we were kids to play games that weren't really hot these are literally hot so I find holding on to them with a uh, paper towel tends to be the best way actually full oven mitt and what we're going to notice with that out of the way is that these skins should just sort of come off without any effort whatsoever and see how nice those skins come off I think what I'll do is something I can wipe my knife down on. Now if you happen to come across a blemish or something, you know, just go ahead and cut that away. No big deal. And then once I've got them peeled, I tend to sort of just like to break them open up a little bit so more of that steam can escape. The more steep the steam that can escape from these, the better. All right, so we got our potatoes all peeled up. They're steaming away. So the next thing that we got to do is we got to mash these down. Now I'm lucky enough; I have one of these. This is called a potato ricer, and this is going to allow me to mash these potatoes without over mashing them. And that's something that we always have to be concerned about. If we end up over mashing our potato, what we're going to do is we're going to release a lot of excess starch, and they're going to end up being really gummy. This is going to give us a really nice sort of smooth mash without me having to worry about over mashing it at all. But most people I don't imagine have one of these at home. So just go ahead and use your masher or use a fork or something like that. Like I say, just take care that you don't over mash your potatoes. So this sort of ends up you know, and I might be dating myself a little bit. I don't know how, uh, when these went in or out of fashion. But when I was a kid, one of the more popular toys was the Play-Doh Barber uh, Play Barbershop kit. And you squeeze the hair up through and this sort of comes out 
looking just like the Play-Doh here from those old Play-Doh barbershop kits. Talon Cyan are always looking for little nibbles. Of course I do lots of cooking so the you know, stuff ends up sometimes on the floor and things like that. I'm going to nibble away on. Alright, so we got our mashed potato there. I'm just going to sprinkle about a half teaspoon's worth of salt over the top. That's so way we know we get seasoning right through. And we need one egg yolk, so I'm going to go ahead and separate out my egg. And that's just going to help to bind it all together. And I'm going to add about a half cup of flour. Now I may end up needing a bit more later. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and add about a half cup of flour to this. And that's what's going to give us our structure. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix this. And again, we don't want to over mix these. As, it, as I was saying earlier, when we're working with potato, we tend to need to work a little bit more gently. Because if we work it too much, we're going to end up with excess starch coming out. You may have even had mashed potatoes before that you found were just like really, really gummy. And that's probably what happened was that they got a little over mixed. And then all that excess starch ended up coming out. And that's what made it really sort of gummy. And funny enough, you know, I use that Play Doh analogy. When this dough comes together properly, it should sort of have almost like a Play-Doh type texture to it. So there you go. I don't want to go mixing that anymore than what I already have. Now we've got to start shaping these. So and there's a little, little flour under my board. I'm just going to take a portion of this. And what we're going to do now is we're going to just roll this into a log. Now these are going to expand in the water. Excuse me, so you don't want to make them too thick. What we're looking for is probably something about a centimeter to a centimeter and a half in diameter for those who prefer that metric system, or sorry, who prefer the imperial system. About a half inch to about a three quarter of an inch in thickness. And this is already getting too long for my board and I don't have it thin enough yet, so it's going to just chop that down so I can continue to lengthen this out. And all we're going to do is just take these and slice them down. Now to give them the classic gnocchi look, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a fork and we're just going to hold it onto our thing and then just roll it over so we end up with a little indent into the center. Now there are special gnocchi, gnocchi boards out there to be able to do this. And this is a trick I picked up years back. And what that does is it creates a little sort of divot in the center. And it's a little bit extra spot space. Well, one, it's going to help to cook it through to the center in the water, but it's also a space for sauce to cling to. So our water is simmering here quite light, nicely now. So I'm going to go ahead and start dropping some of these down into the water. So what we're going to be looking for with these is that we're going to see that they're going to start floating to the top. Once they start floating up, I usually give them about another two minutes or so and then I know they're fully cooked to the inside and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop them into our pan with a little bit of butter and a little bit of garlic. So we'll go ahead and put a little bit of our garlic down into our butter. Go ahead and scoop these on out here now and we'll give them a little fry in our butter here. And get, what we're looking to do 
and just sort of dry them out a little bit, give them a little bit of a crispness on the outside, a little bit of color. And then in the meantime, while those are frying up, we'll go ahead and get our next batch, because I'm actually going to do these with a second sauce. So we're going to do these in two different styles today. Love that smell of garlic and butter. Alright, time to get the second batch out. Get our butter down our pan again. So I'm going to go ahead and throw my diced tomatoes down in here now as well. And the last of the garlic. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of heavy cream in here now, and we're going to let this reduce into a sauce. Just need a little salt, and then we're adding cream to stuff. And I like a little pepper, and since this is a white sauce, I'm going with white pepper. Let's go ahead and give our sauce a little taste here. Oh, that's going to be tasty. All right, I think this is thickening up more than enough. So I'll go ahead and throw a few of these on here as well. And of course, a dish like this really deserves a nice freshly grated Parmesan right over the top. There you go. So you know what? We're going to go ahead. We'll jump on over to our bench over there and we'll give these a little taste. Doesn't that just look wonderful? Oh, smells so good. Let's give one of these a try. Mm. If you love potato, you're going to love these. And again, you can see, you know what? Just like some of the other things that I've tried to show you how to make. It's really not that hard. You just got to take your time. You know, really work in stages. Focus on one stage at a time. Get your little bit of prep work done. And play around with this. There's so many different ways you can serve these gnocchi. You know, I love when I've got fresh sage leaves. Say, for example, I throw those in with the butter. Or other various different herbs, things like that. There's lots of different things you can throw into a cream sauce with this as well. They make a great meal on their own, or you can have them as a side. So as always, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and hit that like button down below. Leave me a comment. If you haven't done yet, done so yet, please subscribe to my channel. It really would help me out. You know, go ahead and share these on your feeds. Uh, you know, if there's anything you'd love to see me. Do a video on and Jim, don't worry, I'm going to be doing one on a stuffed pork chop soon. Uh, you know, I love getting, hearing from you and finding out what you like about these recipes, any issues and challenges, things like that. So keep tuning in and keep coming back. Keep making yourself some great food. Bye for now. Namultus.